Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to this video about incentives. What are incentives is the big question today. The purpose of our lesson is for you guys at the end to be able to understand and describe the purpose of incentives. All right. So I want to ask you guys a couple questions. What do you guys know about incentives right now? And how do we use incentives right now? And I want us to think carefully about that. So what are some things that are incentives in, in your mind? Take some time to talk about it. So first thing today is you guys are going to take a look at a portion of chapter one from the book Freakonomics. And in that book, they talk about incentives. And I want you guys to find and define the idea of incentives according to that author. And I want you guys to, to look at it. And if you look at the, the source, I've numbered the paragraphs for you. I need you to cite for me the specific paragraph where you got it from, all right? And when we do this, you know, afterwards, we're going to discuss what these incentives are and some real-life examples of incentives, again, citing them at specific passages and, and some things that we maybe have here at school in our everyday life. So take some time, read over the first part of that chapter, and then find and define the idea of incentives according to the author, and we'll discuss it as a group. So an incentive, the basic idea of an incentive is anything that motivates an individual to complete a specific action. For instance, the government giving you a better parking spot and free parking if you have an electric car. All right, I know I was in Pennsylvania one time and they had a hybrid parking space for cars that were more fuel efficient. And that was one of those things that um, I thought was neat and I, I recognized right away as an incentive. So when we start to kind of look at this, what you can see is an incentive is something that's trying to make somebody complete a specific behavior. Um, you know, when we look at those types of incentives, you might see quite a few different types of incentives. For example, you might see here at school, we're trying to get you guys to wear a certain type of clothing. So we have an incentive of being in dress code. You know, that means less hassle from your teachers. Um, other incentives might be, you know, uh, you have to smoke outside in this winter when it's been cold and snowy. Maybe, you know, you don't need that cigarette as much as you thought before. And that's one of those ideas there. Taxes as well. So taxes on some of our, quote, sin gut might be one of those things that uh, is an incentive to make people stop doing it. And that's really important to look at because when we look at that, it's, a, it's a, anything that, that motivates us. So if, is it... The scorn of your parents, and that's why you get good grades. Is it, you know, you want to keep up with your peers? Is it this motivation to go to college and you guys know that you need to do certain things now to get there? All of those are incentives, and all of those things really can kind of help you guys get to where you want to go or help you act a specific way. Incentives are, according to Stephen Levitt, the author of Freakonomics, the root of economics. He is he's incentive crazed, which is why I wanted you guys to read this this part of it because he is so excited about incentives, and I partly agree with him. I think if you could you know do these certain things and, and force people to to do something, you can do it. And there's a couple of interesting examples in that chapter. For instance, the one about the Israeli daycare with a three dollar fine on top of a three hundred eighty three eighty dollar bill is that's. $3 that they'll pay gladly to leave their kids there for a longer time and not feel guilty about it. That wasn't a steep enough fine when he talks about it. And that's a really important idea. All right? The typical economist believes the world has not yet invented a problem that he cannot solve, he cannot fix if given a free hand to design the proper incentive scheme. Also from Steve Levitt. You know, when we talk about that, it's important to think, how can that change? And that's the like first question for you guys today. Why do you think incentives are so important? How might incentives change attitudes and behaviors? I want you guys to write this down. Take this. It's, I put a question right there on your notes. I want you guys to answer it there. And we'll come back and answer it as a class in just a moment. All right. Well, thanks for answering that in class. Now we're going to move forward. An incentive is a bullet, a lever, or a key. 
an often tiny object with astonishing power to change a situation. Again, Mr. Levitt with this, this theory. All right? And I want you guys to kind of break down this quote and think, what do you think the author means here? How can the incentive change the outcome of something? What does he mean? What's a bullet, a lever, or a key? And how do these astonishingly small things change a situation? Like, think of examples. And I want you guys to kind of really focus in on that and think, what is the author trying to say with this quote? I think he's trying to make a good point, and I want you guys to pull this point out of it. So we have two types of incentives. We have positive and negative incentives. All right. So a positive incentive and a negative incentive both mean different things. Positive incentive, oftentimes people call positive incentive a reward. They change behavior by creating something that you want. So whether that's a a uh, gift card, a gas card, money, a bonus, whatever it might be, you know, people call positive incentives that reward. They change behavior by creating something that you would want. Right? The negative incentive, on the other hand, is a penalty. They aim to motivate to avoid punishment or pain. So you have motivation for, for good things and motivation for bad things. And you guys agree with that in everyday life. I mean, think about it. Is that something that we do see in everyday life? And how important is it that we have these positive and negative incentives? All right? The question is, how does our school use incentives? What are some things that you'd like to see us doing? More positive or more negative? Explain. I mean, what do you guys think right now? Are we a positive incentive-based school or are we a negative incentive-based school? Tell me about it. So here are some examples of positive, like I got Dwight Eisenhower here watching TV, all right, so that's one of those things like, you know, maybe your mom says you can't watch TV until you do your homework, or you clean your room, all right, so maybe that's what you do there. Maybe it's just a money reward, so maybe it's like, you know, if I call in the car that in front of me that threw litter out of the window, I get a $500 cash reward, all right, maybe that's why you would do something. Right? Or maybe it's just like to be able to have that free time to go do things like go to the mall or, or go hang out with your friends anywhere. Maybe that's one of those things that is used as an incentive. You can't do this until you do that. You can't do this until you do that. It's a great example of a positive incentive. All right? It's forcing behavior to give you something that you want. And that's what positive incentives mean. As for negative incentives, you know, what you can see is you can see a lot of police action. <laughs> But what it is, is is trying to control what you're doing. So if somebody catches you littering, you can be fined up to $10,000 in Massachusetts, right? Maybe you do something that gets you arrested. Maybe that's something that happens. Is like You just absolutely are getting arrested for something because it's there. Or maybe, you know, it's some other type of fine that you'd have to pay or penalty, like a speeding ticket. Maybe that's something that you don't want to do, you want to avoid, because it's important to you to not have to pay that fine. And I think you have a right to not pay that fine. So those would be examples of negative incentives. We have three types of incentives overall. First is economic, second is social, and the third is moral. And each one is unique in what they want to do. All right? That came a little early. <laughs> Anyways, economic incentives are incentives where a person can expect a material reward for their behavior. This is especially true of a monetary reward. So I'm going to give you something for being good. All right. Social incentives is where are where are incentives where a person acts out of shame or glory. They're trying to get the attention of others. So think of a social, um, you know, monetary reward. An economic incentive might be a bonus. A social incentive is. Like, my friends wouldn't want me to do this, so I'm not going to do it. Or my friends want me to do this, peer pressure, and I'm going to do it. Both of those kind of really fit with that idea. Um, you know, like, my friends, I wouldn't be seen, you know, dead wearing that outfit would be a great example, too. Because, you know, you don't want to seem like you don't know what's going on with your friends and that kind of thing. So that's another thing. Moral incentives. Our incentives when a person acts a certain way, they don't want something. 
acts a certain way, they don't want to do something that they think is wrong. I'm going to fix that right after this. But moral incentives are incentives where a person acts a certain way. They don't want to someone to think that they are wrong. They don't want... they. That's really poorly worded. Anyways, what you guys need to know for moral incentives, they're incentives that make a person act a certain way because they think the other way is wrong. All right? My question for this, the overarching question is, do you think all incentives fit into one of these neat categories? In only one of these neat categories. Explain and provide me an example. I am going to fix that moral incentive one too. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, so here's a great example of a social and a um, moral and a, uh, well, a negative economic. So it would be the ice bucket challenge. You guys remember in that ice bucket challenge, uh, you could pour water or donate money, um, and your friends were all doing it. And that was one of those things that was important for us to basically kind of make sure that we saw that this was happening, right? Maybe no smoking signs, maybe smoking in general with the taxes that you pay, um, smoking in this area, those types of things. So you have to go outside to smoke. You have to pay extra to smoke. So there's an economic and like kind of a social right there is you have to go outside. Maybe a positive one is all of your friends smoke and you want to smoke with them, right? I do see smoking on the downturn in this country. I don't see that very much. The last one is the littering. So maybe that's a moral social and the economic one for you because what you're seeing is, is morally you know that throwing litter out of the windows are wrong socially you don't want your friends to catch you doing it and finally you don't want to pay a ten thousand dollar fine and all of those things can add up to you making that decision to not litter so an incentive changing your behavior so sum it up here's the question up on the board, at the end of class, I want you guys to come up and write for me in very little words what an incentive is. I don't want you guys to write the definition. I want you guys to write what it means to you. And I want you guys to come up and do that on the board in just a minute. At this point, I'm going to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, we'll talk some types of economies tomorrow. I already have one short video uploaded if you want to get a head start. If not, that's okay. We'll have a little bit longer of one tomorrow. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon, and I'll see you then. Take care.